guys. <laughs> Excuse me, we've been uh, <laughs> discussing some nonsense in the background. Welcome to episode 49 of the ADV Podcasts, and today is a bit of a weird one. We'll be talking about some important topics, but also <laughs> hopefully getting you into, uh, uh, get, giving you an, an insight into some of the mindset that's going on in China right now. Today's not an important episode at all. You guys it's can tune of, off. It's kind of important. You can tune off. <laughs> it's never important. Um, anyway, everyone, uh, we're going yeah. to start out with our new segment, What's New? And that's when we talk about what's new new specific. Well, it's all about new stuff, right? So it's our segment where we talk about what's new in China. So what's new in China, Seamilk? Give me a second. You can entertain the crowd. Oh, can I? All right. Okay, Um, I'm good. I'm good, sir. Okay, so if you guys can see here, uh, we got a a few leaders. You might recognize the old old Merkel, Mm -hmm. Angela Merkel. I didn't mean to call her old, but she is. Yeah. Um, You got Xi Jinping. What are the other ones here? This is such a blurry photo. Some, it doesn't matter. Some guy in a suit, some the, woman in a suit. The reason I say it doesn't matter is because this photo has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. Okay. It's just like a little segue. Into so what are you going to say? Because I couldn't find a photo because I'm pretty sure it was a private meeting. Okay. So what happened was there's this thing called the, it's like a Central European and Eastern European uh, trade, kind of like a trade infrastructure alliance with China. And China's mm-hmm. a pl- called the plus one. So right. you have China is like a huge piece of this. And then all these little tiny countries that don't even matter. In, in Europe, okay. you know, I mean, sure. from the Chinese perspective. Okay, from the Chinese perspective. Of course, not from mine, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what happens is they they were kind of getting teased by the CCP to be like, you know, you should probably be part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Right. We're going to start in China. It's going to go all the way through Africa, the Middle East, and all that kind of stuff and end up in Europe. Mm-hmm. And they really wanted, I mean, China is it's in their best interest to get all these Eastern and Southern European countries yeah. and Central European countries on board so they can have access to Western Europe. It's, that's really yeah, yeah, the, that's the, the strategic It's key. just an inroad into Europe that way. Problem is, a lot of the, the deals, the infrastructure projects that they promised haven't come to fruition. Yeah. And although some of the more corrupt countries like Greece, um, I believe Romania and Bulgaria were kind of keen on it because their leadership isn't massively transparent. Serbia is fully bought and paid for by the CCP. I wouldn't right. even go there anymore. Yeah. No offense to Serbians, just because mm-hmm. of like it's it's literally basically a part of China. You make a joke about Australia. Serbia is way, 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 way more in line. Right, the CCP. right. Anyway, you have other countries though that are very transparent and have turned into first world countries: mm. Estonia, Lithuania, Latvia. And these two first two countries, I said, Estonia. Play, can you play the media after this? You can just let it play. Sure. I'll put a long loop of it. I'll grab it in there. Lithuania and Estonia, in particular. Uh, what do you? What's going on there, Haas? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with your, the, your media pack. The way I'll open it. My up. media pack. Yeah. Keep keep going. Estonia um, and Lithuania, the Baltics. Yeah. Run that in the background. We want to say particularly to Estonia, a country I've actually been to. Um, and congratulations. Our, our theme song. Our theme song, Cartoon, also yep. Estonian people. Yep. Uh, our favorite Nordic Baltic friends, the very tiny country, but very amazing country of Estonia, managed to stand up to China. And I'll tell you how they did it. They trolled them so bad. Okay. So China is obsessed, obsessed with the idea that they need to be uh, worshipped across the board. It's always been like that. Like you had to kowtow to the emperors and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, right? You punch that mic. Sure. It's still like that. Xi Jinping is actually probably worse than a lot of the traditional mm-hmm. empire emperors. Uh, so they were told to send all their top leadership to this meeting. Mm-hmm. And it was a Zoom meeting. Zoom meeting, yeah. And they were going to discuss their future whatever business dealings. And some of the Baltic countries, in particular Lithuania and Estonia, were like, nah, I'm not going to go. So they apparently got a lot of pressure, even domestically, from, from the government people that were like, no, listen, you go, you're about to meet Xi Jinping. It's sure. Xi Jinping. Yeah. Okay? Better, better be there. Send your you top to guy. be there, yeah. yeah. And the president was like, nah, not going to go there. <laughs> and they actually went down the line and sent some of the least influential, least important people to the meeting. And China was furious about yeah, this. I'm pretty sure. Uh, that is not related. No, it's not. I'll go back um, to that. That's okay. So we wanted to give a shout out to Estonia for sticking up to the bad guys. Absolutely. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, also, let me explain what's going on in the background here. You know, we usually just show footage from various friends around China of, you know, everyday life in the normal everyday cities, whether it be Shanghai or a smaller city somewhere. And a friend of ours is named Zach P. He, he He's, he's a really... YouTuber. Yeah, he's very much into snowboarding. Yeah. And he was like, guys, I want you to show everybody what kind of the top 1% gets to see who goes to these, you know, skiing resorts and stuff. So he set up his camera and he filmed 
uh, a China ski resort where people go snowboarding and stuff for us. So I just thought you would all be interested in seeing what the top 1% kind of deals with. So Yeah, our, it's actually even lower than that because even the top 1% don't usually do winter sports. Sure. It's very and rare. The, the fact China. of the matter is uh, you get to see, you know, a ski resort. Also, uh, boycott the Olympics in China. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <A> good <laughs> segue. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, th- that Estonia thing is fantastic. What's next in our What's New? Uh, I don't know. Why don't you scroll forward and give me a little cue? Oh, yeah, we've got a, a vaccine issue now. Guys, oh, okay, you, go, you can explain that th- one. This one's kind of infuriating. Um, uh, Taiwan, as everybody knows, is one of our favorite places in the world. Country. Yeah, exactly. We consider it a country. Many people in China are not really sure. In fact, they consider it to be part of china sure, but it is a well, it's got its own passport its own money it's got its own culture its own heritage government. its own government yeah it's democratically it's democratically elected government and stuff so it's actually completely different to mainland china anyway uh they were about to uh close a deal to buy what was it five million vaccines, vaccines from BioNTech, yeah. yeah okay so they were just about to buy this this huge amount the deal had already been kind of signed through they'd already sent their press releases for approval all that kind of stuff it's about to be done Last minute, the deal falls through. And Taiwan suspects that it was mainland Chinese pressure from Beijing that caused the, this, this BioNTech, it's called BioNTech, mm-hmm. uh, caused them to cancel the deal. And the reason is BioNTech has a huge interest in a Shanghai company. And so it's pretty obvious what happened there. But it's very immoral if that's the case. I'd say, I would say there's a 99.9% chance that it was pressure from Beijing and from the mainland uh, government to prevent the sale of the vaccines going through. I can't say with absolute certainty, but even all the um, experts that are looking at this issue also believe that's the case. So the the Chinese firm is called Shanghai Fosun, which mm-hmm. is a pharmaceutical group, and they pay they were going to pay 80 well they paid 85 million dollars in licensing fees mm-hmm. and 50 million dollars for a stake in the german firm just so they could uh market the vaccine right. so it won't be a chinese vaccine but they'll have a stake in it right yeah so this is i mean if this turns out to be true you're literally talking about warfare here to me mm-hmm. you're the the chinese government is blocking medical supplies to taiwan yeah, they're blocking them from getting there. If it, it turns out to be true, and I, I think it's absolutely disgusting. But I'm it's not disgusting. surprised. It, it is. It's disgusting. Again, human life means very little to the CCP. Has been proved over and over again. Right. You know, it's an, an unfortunate uh, reality. And Taiwan needs the vaccines, and uh, to have a deal that's already been agreed on and everything's ready to fall through at the last minute because of uh, pressure from mainland China is just disgusting. Yeah. So horrific. Yeah. So um, uh, I think, oh yes, I think it's time for us to answer a super chat or two and then we're going to go into our main segment, which is going to be kind of fascinating to a lot of people if you haven't heard about this stuff before. Yeah. So Um, super chats. Yeah. So we, there was a few people that sent super chats in the beginning and this stupid freaking YouTube is annoying and it just made them go away. But I have an idea. One of them was asking about um, what we, they said, I know you don't follow domestic politics, but what do you think about what President Biden just said? And I'll tell you this. I'm incredibly disappointed. And I think that it was just a a diplomatic faux pas. One of those things where he's trying to just be diplomatic. But at the same time, it's something that I'm very passionate about. And to whitewash genocide. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know. Yeah. Biden basically, Joe Biden basically said that the Uyghur genocide is is a cultural difference. Well, so the way that Xi Jinping runs his country and does his own things, right? Am I right? Well, no, I think it's more along the lines of he had a conversation with Xi Jinping. Right. And he said, uh, you know, I'm as U.S. president, you, you have to understand that um, I can't really just be quiet on these issues. So that's right. that's a good part. That was a good part. But yeah, the unfortunate about part about this is he kind of just says, oh, you know, when China's being victimized by the outside world, yeah. they, they need, a, need to have like a strong control right. over the people and a right. strong leadership. And so Xi Jinping is acting due to the fact that he needs a tight control over China. And so all the things he's doing in Hong Kong and Taiwan, and, and he said the mountains of Xinjiang or whatever in the West, which is not really correct, but whatever. There um, are mountains. There. Yeah, there are some mountains, but it's not like there's things going on in the mountains, no. right? <laughs> the concentration camps are on flat ground. Correct. <laughs> anyway, the fact of the matter is he excused it in a way because he said it, right. it's, it's a cultural differences. And so Xi Jinping understands, and I understand that it's due to cultural differences you see this is something that um you hear in china a lot yeah Whenever this is you, the chinese rhetoric yeah when you're arguing about something first of all if you notice something and you point it out 
they'll be like, oh, I bet you don't understand. Like, no, I can see that. What's this all about? They're like, you will never understand because you're not Chinese. You know, this is a very typical thing. And they try to push this idea that there's a cultural difference. So, you know, when you talk about... Um, uh, people eating dogs, for instance, mm. okay, which is something that happens in China. I've got videos about it. I've got ample footage to prove that this is the truth. I've seen it myself. You went to the Yulin Dog Festival. We've all seen dogs being horribly tortured. It's what happens in China. This is always put down to, oh, but it's just a cultural difference. I I would like to say that that's not true because it doesn't matter what culture you come from. Torturing an animal to death by burning it alive or boiling it alive or, you know, skinning it alive which is what they do they do it on purpose because they believe that the meat tastes better if the animal suffers before dying it doesn't matter if there's a cultural difference it's still unacceptable you right. know what i mean it I mean, may that's, be that's the thing is we were we always have made the distinction of yeah the cultural difference is should you eat a dog that's yeah. not the discussion it's no. should it should you torture animals should you torture an animal to an animal to death but yeah cultural differences it's a wide spectrum obviously there are massive cultural differences when it comes to marriage when it comes to relationships when it comes to food when it comes to everything right um what you do when you enter your house that kind of thing there are massive cultural differences but we're dealing with some pretty bad uh things coming out of china at the moment you know we've got the the whole hong kong breaking the promise uh, of their own promise of giving them that autonomy we've got the taiwan thing where they're incredibly aggressive and constantly blustering you know the xinjiang concentration camps these are big i think uh issues that everybody around the world can agree that cultural differences is not an excuse for that it's no. bad behavior genocide that needs to is stop. genocide if yeah. you're putting people in concentration camps sterilizing, sterilizing people, people cultural genocide or just genocide and again cultural genocide is what the term I would like to use to describe this, because what you're doing is you're you're actually getting rid of a culture. Right. You're forcing them to learn a different language, to forego their religion, to forego all their traditions. It gets much nastier than. It's that as of well. course it's way worse, but you know the shave off the beards, all that. Kind of, it's like it's cultural genocide, and there's also you know actual genocide stuff going on. But the fact of the matter is that's not a cultural difference that can be be excused by. Oh, I understand him. He understands no. me. It should be like. No, this is unacceptable. Correct. So unfortunately, Joe Biden, um, as an outsider, somebody who looks in at America, I see him as a weak minded old man who is probably had a brilliant career in the past, but he can barely put a sentence together. And it's kind of scary to think that somebody leading a country should rather be in a nursing home than actually leading a country. And it, I'm just saying that from observing his speech and his inability to hold a proper sentence together when he actually makes live speeches on TV and sniffing kids and doing all that other weird stuff's a bit weird, but whatever. Just me, <laughs> me as, a, as an outsider, to me, it's a little scary to think that somebody who looks incompetent is leading the United States of America. And it's definitely not the right person to stand up to China because China, they're competent when it comes to what they do and they know what they're doing and they're strong and they're steadfast and they're going to keep pushing forward and you need somebody who's willing to stand up to that you know so that's that's my take on it anyway sure well from a not outsider yeah. there's not a choice and there that's i think it's I, i'll disagree with you on that, that it's a very defeatist attitude there's not he's not bought and sold by china the u.s government is not now immediately a part of i the understand there's checks and balances because of because of the speech <laughs> i'm i'm not i am very disappointed <laughs> sure. and i think that i think that he should clarify i think it's actually it should be pushed yeah. that he needs to clarify what he felt on that and like what actual future policy will be yeah. because it was alarming to me it was massively alarming to me yeah um but you know it, it, whatever promises are made i hope there's actual action yeah you know I'm, I'm not going to be defeatist about this. Though. I'm not. Think... I'm not being defeatist. I'm just saying it's it's alarming. I agree. Because I luckily agree. in the United States you have all the checks and balances, and you have sure. you know different departments. So it's not like in China, if Xi Jinping says we're going to do this, then that's what happens. You right. know that's kind of right. how China works when you've got a dictator in right. charge. Correct. I'm just going to call it what it is. It is. He can. He can just say people are not allowed to say the word. I don't know igloo from now sure. on and if someone says the word igloo they will be arrested and that can be put into into place and enforced right. within china it's not a cultural yeah. difference it's a yeah. brutal dictatorship and it's mm -hmm. a it's a government we're talking about the ccp here it's a government mm -hmm. that erased chinese culture so i don't know what you're talking about joe biden yeah exactly. you're talking about what is a cultural difference a, cult, a country that deleted its own culture so yeah. what is the culture authoritarian and depression okay that's cool mm -hmm. that's a great culture yeah 
Uh, so, so definitely revise your statement is my message to him mm-hmm. and come out into public and actually tell it, say, say, say it like it is. Cause people don't want to hear that. And yeah. it's bullshit. The bullshit thing about that, it pisses me off the most is people with a passing interest or no interest will watch something like that and be like, Oh yeah, whatever. It's just China. We've been fighting the whole, it's just China argument for yeah. so long now yeah. because we watch it go from, Oh, it's just China to, Oh shit. It's just China. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can't go back to that logic anymore. I know uh, politics is a massively divisive issue, especially within the United States. But I, I, I don't care if you support Biden or you support Trump or you support left or right or centrist or whatever it is. What we need to do is hold our leaders accountable. I'm going to say leaders. All of uh, you leaders. Know, we should Everybody. hold them accountable. Correct. And right now, especially since the Democrat Party is a very liberal leaning party, you should not have a leader that kind of excuses the terrible actions, which are very much against the human race, you know, like the cultural genocide and uh, all the nonsense that goes on with Tibet and everywhere else in China. And just the environment, too, the way that China treats the environment. It goes both ways. I mean, Mm. you can't look at it from a partisan thing. You really can't because the the neocons, all the the Republicans in the past, they are the ones dealing with China, too. It's all the same. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah, but you can't have a a figurehead Mm. that promotes the wrong values that are not in line. If if we're going by what Joe Biden said, I'm sorry that we're taking so long on this, but this is kind of divisive. If we're going on what he said, if we're going to use his words and say... I, uh, the American public elects a leader that represents American interests. I yeah. agree that that's absolutely what should should be done. And I think uh, there's probably a few a few things that people agree with that he's probably doing well, let's just mm-hmm. say. That being said, if we're looking at it from the outside, if we're, he's what he's doing is painting the picture that China does the exact same thing. Yeah. He's saying, oh, Ch- uh, Xi Jinping needs to represent the Chinese interests. Because, yeah, because they chose their leader <laughs> because they have a demo- democratically elected government with three three different branches. A lot branches. of people actually mentally don't but realize. That's what that's the problem yeah. with this, the phrase. That's the problem yeah. with what he said. Yeah. Is that you're insinuating that they're two things, but they're just different cultures. And culture is not a factor in the conversation. No, it's not. It's the opposite. There yeah. isn't cultural cultural differences. Yeah. China and America have vast cultural differences, but not politic- not politically when you're talking about human rights atrocities. Mm-hmm. That is not the cultural difference. Also, the idea that China's being victimized by the outside world yeah. is a bunch of don't, bullshit. Don't use that anymore, guys. Um, there, it's, a, it's a neo-imperialist government. China is victimizing all of its neighbors. Yeah, no you know, shit. They, Look at the Southeast they, Asian approval rating this year. They it take over the South China Sea. They sinking Vietnamese fishing vessels, things like that. They are taking over. They're attacking India. You know, they're doing all this stuff. They're the ones that are victimizing other people. They're not being victimized. I mean, the only thing that that's happening as far as China being victimized is people are calling them out on their bullshit. You know, like, hey, you've spread this pandemic. You don't want to take any responsibility for it. Sure. Hey, you really are messing up the environment and, and whatnot. Take some responsibility. It's just cultural it. differences. Yeah, I don't know, cultural differences. Anyway, anyway we, we that, talked about that's this. That's not a rabbit hole, yeah. and I don't want anyone to walk away the impression that we have massively strong opinions. We have only have strong opinions if it's related to China. We see it going mm. the other direction. Yeah. Because it can't go in the other direction, guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is, that ship has sailed. Yeah. We have to be very aggressive and strong against the CCP. I'm not talking about mil- militarily. I'm talking about ideologically. Yeah. So, we have to know that we have to let China know that we don't stand with those values. Yeah, we can't let genocide happen in 2021. How about yeah. that? Yeah, exactly. So anyway. it does, I, I just want to say it doesn't matter who you support. Yeah, um, you got to hold Biden to account. Yeah. So even you if you every even if you have a account. Biden waifu pillow and you you know sure I don't know wrap yourself in the Democratic flag at night and Correct. I don't know go light a candle whatever it is you do, still hold him accountable because the values of uh, human rights should you know, be a priority for everyone. For everyone. It doesn't matter where you Especially you're Americans. Yeah. Come on. Lead by example. Correct. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. Let's move on to the next. Yeah. So we had a couple of um, super chats that disappeared in the beginning, unfortunately, but we did try to write them down from memory. If anyone wants my Biden waifu pillow, it's on <laughs> Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Um, uh, what, somebody was saying that, like, I could go lose weight by going to Crunch Fitness. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um <laughs> I, I think that's not a bad idea, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, someone told Winston to lose weight, basically. Yeah, which appreciate we both it. need to do. Yeah. Um, one one <laughs> says, please look up Chinese netizens behind YouTube channel mocking President Xi Jinping have disappeared. Whoa. Okay. Uh, report China deleting videos with malicious strikes. We'll look that up yeah, definitely. We'll look that up, yeah. Cool. All right. All right. So let's move on to our main section today, guys. Sorry for taking so long in the whole 
Biden nonsense, but let's do it. Soft Power Hour is where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind using <laughs> underhanded ways, usually, and you know, using the Western media against the West, that kind of thing. I just just what? had a just a little funnier memory. Okay, what's I that? I made that video where I found on Ali, I found on AliExpress that they had Trump and Biden watches. Yeah, I remember. they're from China. Yeah. So it was kind of funny to watch like both the Trump and Biden supporters buying these from China. They were like, supposed to be made in America, you know? Right, I remember. But I made a joke and I said, just Biden my time. <laughs> yeah. And people in the, there's some people in the comments and they're like, I can't believe you're a Biden supporter, you <laughs> sick communist. I knew it. You yeah, know? yeah, it was just yeah. like, Bro, I made a joke about a watch. Yeah, biting bro. my time. I remember. And then that. when I made it, when I showed the Trump watch, people were like, "How dare you say that against <laughs> Trump? You can't win. You can't no, you win. Really can't. So it doesn't matter who you support or anyway. what you say. Anyway, uh, guys, we got a bit of a funny one for you. Kind okay? of, kind of funny, it's but it's funny. it's it's actually absurd as well. It's mostly funny. Okay. So um, maybe you could tell everybody about this uh, professor that we're showing here. So this is Huang Huqing, and he works. We're not doxing him, by the way. This is the university yeah. where he works. It has nothing to do with, uh, you know, his... his Zhejiang University of Hangzhou. Yeah, this not is his job, and this is his public thing. We did not get this. This is from an article. I just want to make sure, everyone, that we're not trying to put this guy in blast. Oh, no. Anyway. Well, put himself in this Huang position. Huqing, yeah, he's a, a professor at Zhejiang University, one of the best universities in, uh, in China. Yeah, it's look, it's respected. So think of your... I guess your Harvards and your Oxfords and your... I mean, it's nowhere near as good as that. Yeah, China but, does has no universities even close to I, that. I know, but okay, you, but yeah, you, you think got about that. Tsinghua University it's still and not Beijing University. You know, you, but the thing is, you've got... In China, you would you would say... It would like, be top tier. It's top tier. Top it's tier. Ivy League, you know, it's right up at the top. So you can pretend this is like a mainland Chinese equivalent of a professor at Harvard or Oxford. Yes. That's yes, a good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, but he still has a 163.com email, apparently. Yeah. Anyway... Mm -hmm. So can we move? It's making me uncomfortable. All of this information's on here. Okay. So this uh, take a screenshot now. It's, it's literally from an article about yes, yeah, yeah. on the internet. Yeah, we'll uh, put the article in the description when yeah. we're finished. So this is uh, this is a, a picture. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that a Q. Greece. And what this guy said, this Huang Heqing guy, basically he came up with this conclusion, which wasn't even his, by the way. Yeah. That all. Uh, civilization period yeah not just Western civilization civilization period the pyramids yeah uh, the whatever what else uh, the Pantheon and the Greece Pantheon, yeah you know, the, the, all this kind of stuff all Rome all, yes Rome all this ancient you know when you think of ancient history there's tons of different uh, sure. you know places he said the Mesopotamians you know the, yeah uh, all the all of the ancient civilizations were faked, were faked. They were faked by Westerners and okay so here's the deal I mean, why, why was it faked? Well, we were okay. talking about this yeah. I was like well, so why would I can see why maybe a Westerner would want to fake Western civilization to sure. prop, like out of pettiness, right? Just sure. prop them. So look at how amazing our society is, but actually we built this a hundred years ago right? versus a thousand years ago. Mm. But we are looking into it and it turns out the reason he said all of these civilizations were faked because we were confused. Why would you, why would a Westerner go fake Egyptian civilization? Sure. What does that have to do with a Westerner? Yeah. What does that have to do with an Italian, right? Mm. The reason is, is his claim is that actually we can play his lecture in the background. Okay, Just we'll so you have there. a little ambiance. The reason that these were faked was to denigrate Chinese society. It's, well, yeah, to delegitimize de Chinese de civilization. So we propped up how amazing India was. We propped up how amazing Egypt was, how mm -hmm. amazing Rome was. But we, we did all of that historically to put down China. So yeah. everything was fake. It's all very recent stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we built the pyramids not that long ago. Yeah. And Westerners built and he, them. And he said, he's got all this reasoning that the pyramids were made out of concrete. Yeah by Westerners in order to, again, delegitimize China, make China's civilization seem less amazing than it was. So there's a couple of things <laughs> I want to say about this. Yeah. Maybe just pause it on one of these things here. Sure. Um, his work, basically, isn't his work. And I'm not surprised that a mainland, you know, under the Communist Party of China professor yeah. would... I'm not surprised that they would plagiarize work, yeah. but he's taking, uh, there's some, I think he's French, a French professor or something that came up with this theory. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was a radical. It's not something that people believe, right? Yeah, it's yeah, some sure. weird batshit crazy theory that all this stuff is fake. So it's not even his. Yeah. Um, but he added the element that, hey, it's the reason that they faked all of these things is because to, to delegitimize China, right? And I was thinking yeah. back on this. Right. When I went to school, the mm -hmm. reason I ended up moving to China, you know, ultimately is because of how much I had learned about it. Mm -hmm. 
I do think education is lacking for maybe modern China. Maybe not so much anymore, but when I was going to school. But we learned a shit ton of stuff yeah. about ancient China. It was it was a huge part of our history. Of course. Like in our classes and stuff. And you know what we learned? We didn't learn that we should delegitimize China's history. No. What, what we learned was China was massively more advanced than the rest of the world. Yeah. That's what we learned. So if this is true, if there's all these think tanks and these countries and governments come, collaborated to be like, screw China, we're going to... We're going to push them down, you know? We're going to make all these ridiculous <laughs> fake things, right? To delegitimize China. Why, why do we built the pyramids with the fake, fake stones. stones? Then why do we learn about, in, in history class, that China was more advanced? It yeah. makes absolutely no sense. No. So, um, well, I mean, again, it's this whole, like, Han exceptionalism. Yeah. Um, it, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. This guy, as, as you now know, is basically this very well-respected professor. Right. Is giving a lecture telling, you know, his Chinese students and, you know, everyone in China, basically, that the pyramids are fake. The Sphinx is fake. The Colosseum in Rome is fake. Everything is fake. And the reason it's fake is that Westerners faked it and went and made these fake things right. in order to delegitimize China. Again, I keep saying this, but yeah, I was it's, about to say. it's the dumbest thing mm. ever. It's because, you know, it's like we Chinese are amazing. We Chinese sure. are number one. Sure. We're the greatest. And the only... The only reason why other civilizations may also have the same length as Chinese history is because it was faked. It can't right. be real. I don't understand. But the thing is, like, everyone agrees that Chinese civilization was amazing. And the inventions that they sure. came up with were, were exceptional. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, but I, the, the thing is, like, you know, you always hear this 5,000 years of history thing. They keep going that, on And about. that's fine. Yeah. It's kind of, it's actually doubtful that it is that long, to be Obviously, honest. Obviously, considering you know? the Mongolians took yeah, over exactly. the Yuan Dynasty, which are still considered a Chinese <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Dynasty. Anyway, the fact of the matter is we have civilizations that are older than China. Okay, That and is unheard of in China. Yeah. Try telling that to anyone in China. And that's why they're like, no, it's got to be fake. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying. That's I... something that riffs off on this. And you may have seen in the thumbnail that crazy looking guy with an afro is uh, something man. called Peking Man. <laughs> okay. Not, Not exactly. this Peking Man. Yeah. This, this Peking, Peking Man. man. Um, and Peking Man is kind of like, you know how we have ne Neanderthals and we've we, we done studies and all that to understand that we evolved from an ape into a sort of humanoid thing and with hair and whatnot. And then, you know, we kept progressing. And this whole idea... Humanoid. Yeah, you know what I mean? And this whole idea that we came from africa you know from the cradle of humankind which is actually like a 20 minute drive from yeah, my house in south africa i drove past it a couple of times um it's out there kind of near krugersdorp and stuff anyway the fact of the matter is we this is the the scientific theories that everyone um started at these like ape-like creatures and and you know evolved and went on the different paths and split and off into different the genes and, and whatnot. yeah so and that's why we have you know who we are today that's why you got brown people black people yellow Correct. people white people but we're all you know, from the same but we all source. come from the same source right well when peking <laughs> man was discovered in the 20s uh and it was actually discovered by foreigners by the way you know foreign archaeologists discovered peking man uh, everybody was incredibly excited that this may be a, like a missing link or something, you know, um, and that uh, perhaps chi Chinese people evolved from a different source, you know, so not the same source. And this is, of course, theories in the 20s. They didn't know about the Human Genome Project. They didn't know any of this stuff. Um, and so they believed, oh, okay, maybe Chinese people evolved from a completely different species uh, as Westerners or Africans or whatever. And, you know, the science of the day kind of said that. Um, the thing is, that theory kind of went away, especially sure. with Mao Zedong and stuff. It was like, no, right. you know, that's not the way it is. But in the 90s, there was this resurgence of this like Han exceptionalism, this like Chinese exceptionalism, where it's like, we are a superior race. We're different. And I'm, I'm saying a superior race because that's actually what they believed. If you read the, what's that guy's name? His name's Wu, or yeah, is it Wu yeah. Xingzhe or something? There's an anthropologist who really, yeah, Wu, go down. There it is. Up. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, it is. Wu Xingzhe. Yeah. He's an anthropologist and like a kind of, you, you could say he's an Asian supremacist, basically, through if you read what he says. Sure. And his, the, their whole idea was that they detested the idea that Chinese people, this guy and his followers and his thought process, which is actually quite widespread in China, but detested the idea that Chinese people originated from Africans like everybody else. Okay. It's like, no, we're special. You know, we're not anything to do with that. And there are even cartoons 
uh, and stuff where you can see like Peking man battling out like with a, a black Neanderthal, you know, and like beating him up and stuff, stuff like that that you can see um, in China. I couldn't find those cartoons now, but I remember seeing them on TV back in yeah, the day. Yeah, I do remember um, that. And it's just kind of ridiculous. So it's this idea that Chinese people are so exceptional that not only do they have the oldest civilization in the world and the best civilization in the world, but they actually come from a different species and they actually evolved completely separate from all other humans. And this is a quite a widespread, even today in modern yeah, China. Put in some of the media. What yeah. I, I actually wanted, to, not to not to SJ Dub over here, but what okay. I'm going to say is, you guys got to understand this. Mm -hmm. This only happened. This ridiculous Kool-Aid drinking nonsense only happened because of the Communist Party of China. Right. This wouldn't have existed outside of that. You don't have people in Taiwan talking about Peking man. Sure. You understand? People yeah. in Taiwan, other Chinese people, believe mm -hmm. that they come from the same thing. The reason this happens is because it it's just furthers to legitimize one party rule yet again. Yeah. Because when you when you say, listen. Uh, we're different from everybody, right? Yeah, yeah. We're we're of a different skull. We have we evolve differently. We're not even from the same stock, right? Yeah. So of course we have a different government. You know when people criticize and say, "Why are you still a dictatorship with yeah. 1.4 billion people?" It's because we're different than everybody yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and it actually legitimizes the, their government. I'm not even joking. Yeah. So it's a political tool. That's why Peking Man was further. Peking Man was further. So yeah. you had Chinese scientists that go. What are you talking about? Sure. There's just tons of real scientists in yeah. China that were like, are you, what's wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, sure. Um, are you ridiculous is what I was about to say. Yeah, yeah. And people that actually were, I know, I actually know people that worked on the Human Genome Project in China. Right. In the universities. And they're all like, what are you on about? This yeah. Peking Man Theory has been disproven so many times. Yeah. They took 100 data samples from all different kinds of Asians from around China, right? Yeah, and it, all the ethnic minorities and yeah, stuff. Yeah, everyone. And every single one of them was traced back to uh, to South Africa. Yeah, well, traced back to the the what everybody Southern has. Africa, they all yeah. have the same markers in their genetic code. And you can't yeah. you can't deny that, right? The thing is, mm -hmm. these scientists yeah. were shut down every single time. They still time. get a lot of you know. The problem is when a scientist becomes vocal about the fact that Chinese people are actually yeah. you know from the we're same one. same stock we're as all, all other one. humans. They often get attacked right. and shut down by, like, you know, the netizens and all the other nonsense and other scientists that still believe in this it's, whooshing it's, it's most, camp. It's mostly government that yeah. does that. The real scientists are not stupid. No, of course not. <laughs> but, okay, the fact is, I actually remember clearly I was watching TV in China mm. where they had, like, a show about this. And it was, mm. they would, they just run, like, new genetic tests using the Human Genome Project or whatever because it had just come out. And yeah. I think it was shot in, the, like, early 2000s or sure. something. And I remember seeing the guy's face when he read the results and he saw that, oh, actually, we are, the, we are part of this, right. everyone else, the same right. species. You could see that he was like really proud that they're going to prove now that right. Chinese people are a separate race altogether, like separate from uh, the human race type thing. And he was like, oh, what was the follow up to that? Because that goes against the narrative. They still promote Peking Man. Yeah, I actually don't know, but I just yeah. remember watching it on Chinese TV. I think... I think I know what show you're talking about. And I think what happened in that show was they, they had that, but then they followed up. There's still a lot of research to do. Yeah, probably. Like blah, 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 that kind of stuff. You know they probably I mean? did that. But anyway, it's just kind of ridiculous. And it gives you an idea into the mindset of just China, really. Beijing Yuanren. Yeah, Yuanren. So Peking Man and, uh, you know, this whole, oh, the West faked civilization because they didn't really have it. You know, sure. It's just yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, the, the reason we brought this up is especially yeah. with that original professor is not the majority of Chinese people do not think that Western civilization was faked. Sure. The reason we brought him up is is a great segue into this is not the fr Chinese first rodeo with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Han exceptionalism has become a tool for the Chinese Communist Party for a very long time, mm. Mm. and why this and you you mentioned it happened in the nineties. It's been furthered recently under yeah. the Xi Jinping uh, administration mm -hmm. because. I shouldn't say administration, under his reign, Rule. tyranny. Yeah, tyrannical reign. Uh, the reason is, is it becomes a political legitimizing tool. When you have the internet, you got to shut the internet down so people don't mm -hmm. find out other things. When you have discourse, you got to shut them down. When you have dissidents, you got to shut them down. And eventually it gets pretty messy. But if you can, from the outside, completely warp the education system into thinking we are absolutely different from yeah. everyone in the entire world. Well, I and have anyone to... within our borders needs to be just like us. Sure. I have to draw some parallels to Hitler. Oh, with, very much so. You know, with the whole Aryan thing so. where he was researching the, the you know, the, all, all the things about being Aryan and how different and yeah. exceptional, um, you know, the Aryan race is. It's, it's, the parallels don't stop there because you, yeah. you have a, a Jewish minority in yeah. Germany, right? Yeah. And they were considered a pest. 
Sure. They were considered a nuisance. They were considered, uh, uh, you know, controlling too many things. So they had to do something about sure, it, right? Sure. And th those haunting memories that we learn about in history class are echoed in 2021. The Xinjiang people, they're too different. They're a pest. They're a pest. They're a nuisance. Yeah. They won't. They won't integrate with Chinese society. What do they do? Concentration camps, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't understand how people can't make those connections and how that's sure. considered taboo to make them. Yeah. And it's not a cultural difference, guys. <laughs> nope. You know what a cultural difference is? Is allowing your people to learn reality and not have a professor stand up there and on a podium teaching people that the pyramids are made out of like styrofoam. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, you're talking about a, you know, respected professor. And I think if this happened in the West... And a respected Harvard professor came out and said that everything, you know, Chinese history is all fake and made up and all sure. that kind of stuff. You know, I don't think he would be taken seriously, first you know, of shit. all. He'd probably lose his job. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> He'd probably be called racist. Sure. You know, it's, you know what? This, this leads into something we can talk about some other day. Yeah. But I think it's, it's fascinating. When people, a lot of people that like to champion the Chinese government, mm -hmm. they can say, never mind the human rights stuff. Yeah. Never mind all this stuff. You know what? It's a net positive for Chinese people because you know why? The Chinese government gets rid of religion mm -hmm. and it promotes science, right? And that's just such bullshit because the Chinese government has actively funded traditional Chinese medicine yeah. as opposed to other science. Why do you think their vaccine is so shit? Yeah. Why do you think it's so... So the scientific... People think China's at the forefront of science because they landed something on Mars. China has pockets of massive funding that supports projects that make it look good. Yeah. But by and large, Chinese people, by and large, Chinese people, especially the older generation, has not a care in the world for science. You yeah. understand? Yeah. There's very much legitimizing. Superstition. Superstition tradition. Yeah. Tradition, all this kind of mm. stuff, which is, which is fine. Mm. But the problem is your average Chinese person, especially even in my wife's generation, doesn't learn very much about science, right? Yeah, I'm not right. saying they're 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 undereducated. They're definitely educated more in math and other things like this. Sure. But science has never been a top tier precedent, right? No. So I, I always find this ridiculous that, oh, you have to remove religion and then you can promote science because that's what the Chinese government does. And that's an absolutely not true. Yeah. No, they, they promote copying science. Sure, that's robotics it. and things, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's that that's the thing. It's like, why is it that they always have to steal the secrets and, uh, you know, steal the formulas and go and copy the... The, the everything it's because they're not actually creating it well it it's, is you know but it's also this fallacy that oh so j one party rule is justified authoritarian oppression is justified in china because that means they can go do science now that's like the most lazy uh, you hear that though yeah, you western do, people you, you have to get rid of religion like a religion is not allowed now <laughs> you have to get rid of the religion and then oppress people and then it can become a, a woke like post-modern problem is china does have a religion and their religion is the communist party sure. of china their right. religion is worshipping Xi Jinping thought. Right. You know, when you have a religion like uh, Christianity and Jesus and a Bible, right. now you just have Xi Jinping and his Xi Jinping thought Bible, which everyone has to study. It's the same thing, right. except modern. It's kind of what happened in North Korea with the great leader and dear leader and all that nonsense. And, right. You know, anyway, it's time for us to hit some super chats yeah. before we move into our next segment. Sure. Uh, people are, keep whining because mm -hmm. when I... I'm going to actually move this a little bit because when okay. I read the questions, they can't hear me. Okay, go um, for it. What does this guy say? That says uh, A O I O. A O I O. Okay, A O I O. Taiwan number one, Japan number one, USA number one, China number one ninety. I'm actually going to disagree. I'll say China number one as well, but Chinese government number one ninety. Mm -hmm. um, still, still love the country. Mikey, oh Mike, did you reply to Tim Pool's invite? Lyd Lydia mentioned y'all. This is nonsense. I think you guys are just trolling now. Yeah. I've, I told you, I've already replied. Well, yeah, we replied. We, we, replied got, we reached out ages ago. This, we'll, we'll double check and see if there's sure. anything. Mm -hmm. just, it, maybe it just happened. Yeah. Sarptarshi so, Sengupta. Uh, how difficult is the Gaokao in China? Very. Very. Uh, is familial and societal pressure to excel too high? Yes. A lot of mm -hmm. people kill themselves. because We of made it. a video about this on ADV China ages yeah, go ago. Yeah, so check it out. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's pretty called... easy. Pretty easy to find. Just uh, talk. Just education, search it. Education. ADV China education. education you'll find the thumbnails got like uh, school children doing stuff. We, yeah. we talked all about it. Yeah. PB, uh, Winston, do you miss your appendix? <laughs> um, no. Do you feel a hole? No, it's no. totally fine. Do you feel like you've lost a part of your life, of yourself forever? I mean, I don't like the fact that I had to remove something, but it was either that or probably die. So You're like 40% of the population or something, so don't worry about it. 
and it's entirely it's entirely my own fault it's just because i was too unhealthy and sure. drinking too much and all that not looking after my health and it kind of it was a good thing because it kick-started me into becoming a health um, boy not becoming a health he's boy, like green, take, drinking green milkshakes all the time it's really good no i'm not piss off okay <laughs> i'm taking my health more seriously i'm not drinking sure. as much anymore these days i'm trying to get some exercise mm-hmm. in. so it was a good thing me too you know the thing is when you're young in your youth you can still kind of get away with just sure. abusing yourself but it gets to a point where you're like hang on a second now I got responsibilities in life. I got to, you know, tone that down. Like you can see by our amazing skin that we've stopped abusing ourselves. That's a joke, but we have stopped <laughs> abusing ourselves. Yeah. Um, and nice haircuts, by the way. I Thanks. didn't get a haircut, but you Thank did. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Haley Rich has been watching for six years, basically grew up watching this channel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm 18 now with a job. That's really cool, actually. Think about That's it. Awesome. She was like 12 when she started watching. I recognize the name, so. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, just got my first check and wanted to thank you guys. Thank you, Haley. Oh, now that is That's really that cool. Is, that is fantastic. Now thank go you spend so it on something more exciting than yeah. a couple old men. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, seriously, stay men. awesome. Stay awesome. That's awesome, though. Mm. I'll do one more. Uh, eat one more now. Mm. E Hang Glide. I've been supporting for years by subscribing, watching, and liking. Uh, thanks for your work, and here's some actual for y'all do money. Okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> when will you guys be traveling again? What is your tentative schedule? Oh, we mentioned this previously yeah. that uh, we'll be doing Japan and, and then India. Yeah. Um, and we don't know the schedule just after vaccines, and we're allowed to. In the interim, don't discount the fact that we will be traveling around the states sure. quite a bit. I mean, if you've been... Uh, tuned into ADV China, you'll know that we kind of went to Hollywood and all around there sure. to take a look at the situation under lockdown. But people and, are waiting for Japan. Yeah, we're gonna I mean, that's doing. not traveling, so to speak, but it is going places and filming different things. So uh, here's the thing. As long as we're landlocked, uh, we're going to try and find interesting things to film sure. and see and go and do in the meantime. Because but we will go to Japan as soon as possible. Yeah, Japan and India. That's yeah. our goal. Yeah. I can't wait to get back I to India. I think we can soon, actually. I, I really I really enjoyed my time in India last time. It's cool. such a fascinating place. I can't wait. Never yeah. been. Uh, um, so you're going to suffer big time with I'll your right. weak stomach. You'll, I'm fine. Yeah. I take care of myself now. Okay. Maybe if you bring your own food. I'm going to eat everything. <laughs> you know me. All right, Don't we'll you see. dare. I eat, I eat more stuff than you do. I'm the least picky eater in the entire world. That's right. You know that. Yeah. Uh, Seth N says, interview Uyghur man interview Uyghur man I did actually oh. thank you that was yeah. very generous Seth yeah. and I did interview a Uyghur man on my yeah channel. yeah you did you had um, Arslan Hidayat yes he very nice very man. interesting guy very interesting all right interesting let's move guy. on all right so it's time for us to move on to our worldview where we talk about everything in the world usually with regards to China uh uh-uh. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah huh. okay so we've passed by Peking man uh Peking duck's pretty good by the way it's one of the best yeah exactly. definitely try it if you haven't so, uh, Burma, M- M- Myanmar. Burma's awesome, by the way. And I'd, and people are going to be like, oh, you're a colonialist. Burma's awesome because they speak English, which was really cool when I went there. It was just interesting because, like, people in Thailand have, like, a passing English. But it was weird because Burma's so much less developed than Thailand. It's mm. way poor and, like, way more ghetto, right? Right. Just because it's, like, a proper third world country. Sure. But everyone speaks English because it was an old British country. Sure. It's kind of like India. It's very interesting. Well, Ghana, they speak English as their national language, too. What does that have to do with Burma? I'm just saying it's it's pleasant if, yeah, if yeah. they speak you, your language. It just makes it easier to communicate, yeah, is my point. I'm not, not saying they should. <laughs> no. Just saying it's pleasant as a as an english as an english speaking traveler it's pleasant it's very nice yeah justice is blind coup is crime and china is behind uh the protests have blown the f up by the way and the focus is turning towards china the people in burma not happy with the military coup Mm. and china there's more and more stuff being pushed towards the theory that china may have backed the coup and i'll tell you why skip the next picture sure now so this is something you know more about but tell people Mm. about flight tracking you can track anything right you can, you know, uh, all commercial flights, etc., have transponders on them. Sure. And so I guess in the interest of just public interest these days, you can access, you know, any flight in the world. So if you want to see where your grandma is coming on the plane and you want to make sure it's on time, you've got all these websites where you can actually track uh, flights. And so it's kind of public data. And obviously there are international treaties and stuff. You have to have your your transponder on in order to travel across borders and stuff otherwise you might get shut down by you know a fighter jet because like what is this weird plane coming in here so it's kind of difficult to hide when you're sending planes to certain places from certain places and so i guess people have been tracking these flights from china into burma yeah so the thing is there's a media blackout Mm -hmm. and 
everyone in Burma was suspecting that they're going to institute basically the Great Firewall of China in Burma yeah. to stop people from communicating, to organize protests, and to stop all information because the people want the democratic government back. Yeah. The military uh, junta was like, nah, that's not going to happen. Let's, we know China's got this under control. Right? Yeah. And China's like, hell yeah, we'll help this out. We love another oppressive dictatorship that we can own. Yeah. So they sent over these airplanes. And you know what China said was on these airplanes? Their favorite thing. Say it. Frozen seafood. <laughs> Why? Yeah, well, maybe maybe they want to send COVID to, oh, to Burma. <laughs> now, before you go to the next pic picture. Yeah. I want you to heart, just go back in your, the annals of your memory. Sure. Okay. And me and you are hanging out in Kunming. We actually had a great time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been there a few times, but me and you had a particularly good time. Met a lot of our Chinese fans, which was really yep. fun. Yeah. I had a wonderful meal, and we finished our massive documentary trip yep. there at the beautiful lake. Right? Yeah. Did you have seafood there? No. Because the, the flights are coming out of Kunming, by the way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just thought people could get Okay, that. they yeah. couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Kunming is a thousand kilometers away from the coast. Yes. So what kind of seafood are you getting? Are you talking about lake food? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Polluted yeah. lake food? It's kind of dumb. Surely they could have come up with a better excuse than seafood. Well, they, they should have because you can go to the next picture and we'll see what was actually on those planes. Ah, crap. <laughs> ah, crap. Well, if this was frozen seafood, those boxes would be soaked a little bit. You'd probably see some water dripping out of them. <laughs> probably smell real yeah, bad. It wouldn't be like military-grade, you know, weapons boxes. Yeah. So. Sorry, guys. Um, and my heart goes out to Burma. I think things, things are going to get real ugly pretty quickly now. If you've got, if this is legitimate, these pictures, yeah. um, which we're, we're you hearing. Never know. I mean, like, we're hearing they are. Yeah. They could be, they, this could not be legitimate, so don't yeah. hold us to it. But if they are legitimate, that is that is scary because that means China is supplying them with arms. and this to, is, to an oppressive yeah. dictatorship that wasn't voted in. Yeah, and this is just not going to turn out very well. And in just in case there is shrimp in there, um, mm -hmm. I hope you guys have a great seafood festival. Military-grade shrimp. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they're full of gunpowder. Yeah. Don't they have those pistols? Maybe they're pistol shrimp. You know those pistol <laughs> yeah, shrimp? Oh, those things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, anyway. anyway. Um, Good time for you us. Had, I know you had a picture you wanted to pull up. Oh, I did. I did. Yes. Yeah, sorry, guys. Um, let me get to it. It is right over here. Okay. So let's try to explain what's going on in this picture. I actually posted this. You posted this, too. It's kind uh, of funny. This is my Instagram. Yeah, this is your Instagram. Nice plug. Uh, anyway, for those of you at home who can't see it, it's some screenshots of multiple headlines from different newspapers. They should have had so, more. Yeah, because there are more. The Mail Online read, read, yeah, read them. says, okay... Fair Sorry, enough. just uh, right. a lot of water. gas from this thing. Okay. Mail Online says, China claims coronavirus may have started in Australia and traveled to Wuhan's wet market via frozen steak exports and attacks U.S. alliance with insulting new cartoon. Okay. Um, the fact that they even say that Australian beef was sold at a wet market is kind of bizarre to me because you don't sell Australian beef at a wet market. It must be a fancy-ass wet market. Yeah, seriously. They sell just random, like, fresh live animals and well, food and stuff. Well, I'll tell you what. Stuff. The wet market I used to go to. Mm -hmm. I used to go to wet market all the time. Sure. And they had pork and chicken that was, like, local, mm -hmm. or you could have, like, the really cheap mass farm kind. Yeah. But then they had the most expensive kind. It was called, like, Tibetan pork. But it actually didn't come from Tibet. It was just yeah. the Tibetan pigs that they yeah, raised locally. Yeah. You ain't getting imported no, food. No, there's there. no imported food at wet markets. Okay, challenge. Oh, I, I have a correction. What's that? Some of these wild, like, illegal trade wet markets, Yeah. They, they'll sell, like, boas and stuff from different countries. Okay, yeah. Sure. I'm just saying, go to a wet market in China, and you know what they are. They're just full yeah. of raw meat and stuff there, and we've got tons of footage. We've been to many. Find and us a steak. Show me the imported food section where they have, like, Australian steak and, you know, Japanese wagyu or whatever. Yeah. Show me that, because <laughs> I, I've never seen it before in all my 15, 14 years that I was in China. All the wet markets I went to. Even in the fancy cities like Shenzhen, there was a wet market down from my house. You don't get Wagyu it's, beef. It's fresh produce. It's not imported, you know. I'm anyway. not dissing it. I don't care. So anyway, sorry. That was one headline. Yeah. Okay. The second headline uh, from another newspaper says, Chinese officials blame U.S. Army for coronavirus. And we all know about that. The, Fort Derrick yeah, The bullshit. Fort Derrick thing. And then the New York Post says, China suggests Italy may be the birthplace of COVID-19. Italy pandemic. must be pissed off, by the way, because they were the ones that were like, you know what, we're going to trust China. About we're going to go hug Chinese. They were, yeah, they were the only ones that were like, you know, and they accepted all, they donated and then accepted and then yeah. bought back all their supplies because yeah. China actually didn't donate them. They made them no, buy they them back. Buy them, yeah. And then, then China's like, by the way, I think you guys started it. Yeah, exactly. 
And then there's another um, uh, newspaper with Chinese scientists now say India is origin of coronavirus. So what you've got under there is kind of like a funny um, a cartoon that you've got Winnie the Pooh with one of those spin the wheel. Like yeah. That, you that should get be on... Legion. Yeah, that's his podium. It, it is, yeah. And it's like a, one of those wheels you spin on a game show and it's got all different flags from different countries. And uh, they say, let's see who's responsible for our fault. <laughs> you know, and it's blamed. So you get to spin the wheel. Anyway, the, the significance of this funny little meme is that uh, if you look in the screenshot at the top, it says, sorry, this post has been removed by the moderators of r forward slash memes. Moderators remove posts from uh, feeds for a variety of reason, reasons, including keeping communities safe, civil, and true to their purpose. Okay, so r memes is a Reddit subreddit that just posts memes, and you get the most ridiculous things on there. And you've got political memes, you get like anti-American it's, it's anti like, memes, it's you get pretty anti-everything. It's, it's pretty normy. It's pretty normy. It is. It's just but you get memes for everything. Sure. And this is not an insulting meme. This is a funny meme because no. you can see actual headlines from different newspapers where China's blaming this country, that country, right. this country, that and, country. And you notice the bottom picture doesn't say "Let's who's responsible for our fault" with a picture of China. No. Nobody said. China is is at fault for the coronavirus. Sure. The Chinese government, it says Ministry of Foreign Affairs with a picture of Winnie the Pooh mm -hmm. with the CCP logo on there. Yeah, there is yeah. no no problem with distinction here, guys. Sure, sure. This is not a map of China. Yeah, it's not. So unfortunately, <clears throat> this shows, and this is very important to our message, is it shows how the Western social media and Western media is being manipulated right. by China. Because if you can't even post a meme like this, which is totally fine it's funny it's relevant um but it has to be removed probably because they're afraid of being called racist or some nonsense like that it shows you how china is winning this war soon you won't be able to criticize china at all without being basically strung up and canceled by the cancel culture out there right this is one of the things that we have to watch out for and we can't allow it to continue on this path mm. on this trajectory i mean it's a good a good thing that the guy said in the super chat too is that these chinese people that came up with chinese netizens that were making fun of xi jinping get disappeared that's the kind of stuff that happens within china for the most minute mm. things but we're seeing inklings of that with this kind of stuff like yeah, yeah we're not gonna get disappeared for posting yeah. a winnie the pooh meme but you can get it removed which is unacceptable i know, I know. you so now we can't we it's just get this through your heads i'm mm -hmm. sorry yeah you can't make fun of an authoritarian <laughs> dictator yeah. you can't make fun of a dictator yeah i don't get it what yeah. happened yeah it's f super fun to make fun of lenin and, and hitler and all this kind of stuff mm -hmm. we're not allowed to make fun of xi jinping why you're, you're allowed to make fun of trump you're allowed to yeah. make fun of biden you're allowed you can make to make fun, fun, of fun of whoever the hell you want yeah i know but not the chinese government no no that's not okay no and they will send their their little armies of internet people out to get you and to flag well, your stuff first they first they do it to themselves and sure. disappear their own citizens freaking they can't disappear random people on you know overseas who make memes but they can sure as hell get their memes taken down uh, anyway, anyway free the meme yeah let's uh let's move on to our q a section because we've got a lot to answer and uh, you know we answer your questions you question our answers sure. just so, lean towards us sure so i'll lean towards can um, you hear me <laughs> He moves closer to so he doesn't or moves away to not breathe into the <laughs> Can mic. You hear me? <laughs> uh, Jeremiah Johnson. That by the way, that was a joke about Chocolate Rain. You remember Chocolate Rain? No. Chocolate Rain. Oh yeah, yeah. He he's, he watches my videos. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jeremiah Johnson, use this to fuel your cars or for silver bullets next time that they're on the menu. How about both? Thank you. Nice. What if I fuel my cars with silver bullets? <laughs> uh, what? That's not a good idea. I'd have to fix it then. Yeah, true. What games are you guys currently playing when you find the time? Very, very happy you asked. <laughs> we are currently playing. Um, right. You're I'm, currently playing. I'm playing Chrono Trigger again. But with a sound hack. So it yeah. has orchestral music. You know, I'm a bit of a retro retro geek, and I've got all the old... Uh, I've set up a little corner in my, we, we my both house. Have. We literally yeah. have both set up respective corners in our houses yeah. to play Super Nintendo. Yeah, CRT, Super Nintendo with the... Yeah, but there are all sorts of new hacks that kind of improve the quality. Yeah. So I I'm playing Chrono Trigger. I started Star Ocean yesterday, mm -hmm. and I've been playing a game called Holy Umbrella with nice. my daughter. That's cool. Which is a Japanese game. Also play DCS quite a bit, you know, which is Digital Combat Simulator. I'm, I'm quite into flight simulation, mm -hmm. and so I enjoy it. It's very realistic, and it's cool. And Super Mario Odyssey. I just finished that. Yeah. I actually finished it, though, unlike you. That's good. What do you mean? I finished it. <laughs> no, you, you didn't. You didn't kill the moons. Uh, <laughs> keep the content. I got better things to do with my time. 
sure you chasing did. Mario moons. Mad Rocks 303. Keep the content coming. Mm. Uh, it's important that we know this, and thanks for all that you do. Keith, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Case Close 93. I talked to my dad about the whole Disney and Western countries working with CCP in Xinjiang, and he said that he didn't completely believe it. How do I change his mind? Oh, boy. It's easy enough. Look at the Mulan credits where they thank the the public security bureau of the areas where the concentration camps are. Yeah. Easy. Uh, I can't read this. This is Afrikaans. I get a frog prat yella al bay Afrikaans. Thank you. What yeah. does that mean? It's just I have a question. Do you speak Afrikaans? Yes, thank he does. you. Yeah, I can I can die tal prat, ma I guess need to good me, I think you say. Yeah. Cesario JPN. Mm. Saw China ban <laughs> BBC World Sur- World News Services. Mm. Yep. Is this retaliation for England's Ofcom pulling yes. CGTN? We talked about this last time. 100%. Just go to the last episode and we did the whole thing on it. Absolutely, it's retaliation. Yes. It's tit for tat with China every time. Why do you think they uh, disappeared, the two Canadians, when Canada uh, detained their Princess Huawei Meng? Yes. It's tit for tat. That's how China works. It's actually very transparent and it annoys me that people don't see it for what it is. Right. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Zachary, Uyghur women are forcibly. Why am I? I wasn't why laughing. Are you, at that. Laughing? Do you know why? Because you said tit for tat, and you said it. So, you keep saying that, and I just keep thinking, if certain if a certain gender has tits, who has the tats? It's not the tit that's re- referred to in that. Uh, is it like a bird? No, it's different. What is it? Teach me. It's, got, it's a it's a word. It's a wording thing. You don't even know yourself. <laughs> it's definitely not that. <laughs> Who has the tats in this relationship? Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> oh, it's like tattoo. Tit, tit, tits and tats. No, that would be a really no, good not. tattoo parlor. Stop. <laughs> stop. Just continue. Wow. Stuff. Okay, Zachary. <laughs> sorry. Uyghur women are forcibly sterilized in Hong Kong. Democracy is completely broken and destroyed. Hmm. How do I get other Americans to take PRC seriously? Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean like take the human rights atrocities seriously? It's tough. Just educate them without being preachy about it. Yeah, I think I think it's it's a very tough thing, and I, I feel that there's a lot of pushback, especially since, you know, the unfortunate thing is that the Uyghur minority are Muslim, right? And especially in today's climate with uh, the post 9-11, mm-hmm. there are a lot of people that aren't very sympathetic towards Muslims in places like America because they, they have this, this uh, connection or connotation, and Correct. they see it as being like uh, ISIS or... You know, Al-Qaeda, all that kind of thing. It's not the case, though. But I think that's why a lot of people are reluctant to care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's horrible. There's genocide or there's, you know, concentration camps, but it's Muslims. Right. And so to a lot of people, they don't care, which is kind of abhorrent because it's, you know, we're not dealing with, you know, Al-Qaeda people, although a couple of them do join and stuff. It is. Yeah, what what a minority, though. Yeah, we're dealing with, like, human beings that are being systematically taken out of their homes and put into these camps, these so-called vocational camps, separated from their families. Han Chinese people having to stay and sleep in the same bed as their wives while the men are in the the camps. Sterilizing the women. There's all these reports, which I believe, of rape and, and nonsense that goes on. And it's just terrible. You know, we're, we live in uh, a year where this shouldn't be happening. No. This is not the 1800s or the 1700s no. or the 1600s. You know, this whole idea of slavery and, uh, you know, separating people like this from their families and stuff is just not acceptable these days. No. In any way, shape or no. form. You know? And uh, it, it really irks the hell out of me. Because it's a big problem. And people just don't seem to care. And it annoys me. So I don't know how it is you can get through to these people. But probably the best thing to do is to look up some of the Uyghur activists that are online. And they're talking about it. Because like Arslan, who was on uh, Seamilk's channel, maybe mm-hmm. show them that video. Yeah. Because Arslan... Yeah, he does a great job. He's got an Australian accent. He's speaking English. He's very understandable. Listen to him, what he has to say. And uh, hopefully it'll change your mind. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Mm. Ready? Yeah. Uh, PB, could you comment on the conflict between factions in the CCP? Heard the real reason behind anti-IPO got dinged was because Winnie didn't want more money to get in the hands of Jiang Zemin's cronies. And I, I would definitely believe that. Yeah. Um, I actually probably will do a whole video on the factions of the CCP because I that's, do know that's quite a good a bit. idea. I yeah, know you quite should a do that. that. Mm. Uh, Taiwan number one. Hell yeah. Yep. J. Leo, I agree China undercounted their cases. Other sources said even they counted everything from day one, their numbers would still be much lower than the USA. And that's that's potentially true. But 
the the fact that the cases are <laughs> were lied about completely. Well, I mean, there's all sort matter. there's all sorts of like weird things coming out now. For instance, um, the amount of people collecting pensions suddenly dropped off. Sure. By a huge amount compared yeah. to the year before. Sure. Which means that those people no longer exist. But it doesn't match up with the uh, reported yeah, deaths. Yeah, like the whole cell phone thing. I was skeptical about that in the beginning. Yeah. I, I reported on it, but I was skeptical about it. But when you have pensions and things, it's a little different. Yeah, no one's going to like, oh, I'm just not going to collect I'm not my gonna pension. Collect, not, especially, especially not, no, not, not the in lost China, generation no. in China. That's no, sure. they'll line up for five days. Yeah. No, They're seriously, too- though. And it's these little data points that are coming out is maybe things that they didn't think about. And so it's just showing that there's a vast difference in what the reported numbers are compared to the real numbers. And we've known this from the beginning anyway. Right. Uh, Victor Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. um, Americans are uninformed on China. Every time I criticize the CCP, I'm called a Trump supporter or CIA employee. Left and right media are terrible on China. And I agree, both sides, we get equally angry. Yeah. Because they're just so under, they underrepresent what's happening in China. It really, really pisses me off. You know, a lot of right-wing media is like, yeah, China's got it right. They they know how to deal with this situation. It's like, shut up, man. Right. They don't and got then, it right. And then the left, the other side is just very excusatory. Yeah, about it's like, the oh, thing. it's just cultural difference, yeah. you know, it's like blah, 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 whatever. All you guys are dumb. Realize that China is taking advantage of both y'all. Yes. Okay. Mao De Mighty says, Taiwan, Tibet, Mongolia, Hong Kong exists. F le CCP. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, le CCP. Yeah. Thank you. J-Man, nice guy, 1492, mm-hmm. says, before the Poland invasion, the world tried to d- downplay genocide and do business with Nazi Germany. That is yeah. correct. And we're yeah. dealing with the same thing. It's exactly the same situation. Minus an imminent war, I see parallels with the CCP, and you're absolutely correct. Yeah. You, what you said makes is exactly what I think. Yeah. Uh, Linda Hunter. Hey, fellows. Can you please explain when China is hosting the Olympics? I cannot work it out. I mean, why? Uh, why? We are also trying to figure that out. Um, I've been contacted by, there's a group that's trying to, you know, sign petitions and stuff to stop the Beijing Olympics. Yeah. And we're going to bring that up next week. Sure. Because I need to. That's a good idea. I need to join, con- make contact with them again. But it does. We'll look into it as well. It, it does boggle the mind that the world yeah. is just willing to completely. I mean, even if there's a, a slight possibility that what's going on in Xinjiang is going on, we shouldn't be hosting the Olympics in a country well, that is allowing I'd this say, to happen. I'd say go for it, but mm-hmm. let the international tribunal go and investigate it then, and then sure. we'll figure it all out. And China, if you're telling the truth, then everything's fine, yeah. right? Yeah. Just like you gave all the data of um, of all the initial COVID patients over the raw data over to the WHO to investigate, <laughs> right? Oh, wait, yeah. you didn't. No, you didn't. Nope. Um, Tornado yeah. Brick, what yeah. are your favorite video games of all time? Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, um, fan, uh, Tales of Fantasia. Tomb, I love all the Tomb Raider games. I'll probably yeah. stick with that. Probably, oh, and Metal Gear, I like the Metal Gear Solids as well. Uh, yeah, for me, The Witcher 3. Mm-hmm. Definitely The Witcher 3. Um, Mass Effect. Oh, we're playing Baldur's Gate 3, we forgot to mention. Yes. Me and you play that together. Baldur's Gate 3 is an early it's access. It's really good, yeah. Mm. Uh, Tony Davos, thank you very much. Mm. Hector Hernandez, thank you. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't know why I'm apologizing. It's not my fault. YouTube's such an a-hole about this. Mm-hmm. Um, Micro Colonel says, by the way, Tim Cast Lydia says she emailed you and you didn't get back to her. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Can we stop this facade? Yeah. They want you guys on the show. Okay. Well, I will give everyone the benefit of the doubt that it's in yes. my spam folder. Maybe will... she just did right now. Yeah, we will check. We I'll will check, check right after the show. Yeah. Uh, Naldo V, thanks for the hard work. Absolute pleasure. Uh, Chippy, Chipri Kuiki 0083, reject modernity, re- return to monk, <laughs> le monk. Also, Tim the pool man paler would like a word. Okay. <laughs> hey, Tim the tool Tim man. man Taylor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, By the way, cool. we have nothing against Tim Pool. I want to oh, clear this no. up. This has just become a meme. Yeah. yeah. Um, if they want to, if, if again, the door is wide open. Our yeah. door is open. Yeah. You know, um, Jordan T. Russo, what do you think will happen to China when she dies? Uh, just his, there'll, his there'll, faction is. Yeah, becoming... there'll be a power vacuum, but it'll easily be taken up by the next in line. Yeah. Mm. Which will be in his faction. Obviously. Winnie Lee, what you guys do are so important. Keep it up. Thank you, Thank Winnie. You. Appreciate yeah, we that. We appreciate it. You know, it's tough because we're constantly fighting. A, a, it, I, I just don't know how to explain the kind of crap that we have to go through sometimes. Yes. I've got I've got an obsessive stalker on Twitter who you, keeps you do. Hey, 
and we well, actually we have an obsessive stalker. and just one of many he loves us who goes through all of my videos from like 10 years ago our videos yeah i know but he's been on the attack on me for a long time gotcha. no. that's very true and finds little snippets out of like that takes things completely out of context and then creates straw man arguments and tries to gaslight people you know trying to pretend that i'm some kind of crazy racist and stuff and when you've got this kind of nonsense constantly in the background as well as your youtube channel constantly under attack by you know the 50 cent army and uh, these mass flags and stuff and all the other stuff you do being interfered with in your life it gets very very annoying so a comment like yours really helps more than you know to inspire us to continue doing what we're doing we're not going to give up and that's the thing i think that's what really annoys um these cowards the most is that we're not going to give up as much as they do the nasty low below the belt stuff that they pull all the time all the bad things that they've done to our families and to ourselves it's not going to stop us and this just gives them even more rage and anger against us and so we're constantly putting up with crap and like i said your comment makes it all worthwhile especially thank from you what I, i'm pretty sure she's chinese as well which is awesome well thank i just want to say thank you to everybody who supports us because it's so important i just think to use your name publicly as a chinese person takes a lot of courage mm. to mm. support us and i appreciate that yeah um ifan pan as well yep. thank you very much han is never a race concept but a cultural concept the modern han people is a mixture of many races you're we, correct yeah, yeah and there are many foreigners in high government position in history but since the ccp destroyed the culture they can only play the race card now and that's absolutely it's what very, happened. very true yeah you, got, you kind of got rid of when you get rid of anything, you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, Tim Pool's team sent the email it's December 10th. Really? Yeah, so we'll check. Okay. We'll check that. Let me write that down. All right. Deck 10. Yeah. We got to get to the bottom of this. Yes. Uh, what's next? Dion Chapman, as always, our man. Mm -hmm. Looking good. Thank you for the, the generous one. Mm -hmm. Um Oh, sorry, I missed one. Oh, and I missed the live stream last week. Bye, go, Wan Yen. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Philip R., will there be giveaways in the future via the Worthless Whips patron? Selfish question, but curious. We actually wanted to, but yeah. it's tough. We've got, you know, we've got a car that we've been trying to give away for yeah. a while now, but there's so many weird laws in California because we were thinking um, we could do something along the lines of... Um, uh, like a raffle, but not a raffle because that's illegal. Yeah, we're not trying to make money. You, you can't. Yeah, it's not about that. But we wanted to give everyone a fair chance, and we want subscribers, obviously. But when we tried to look into it, um, patron. In fact, even patron. When we talked about, yeah, we made a post which said we're giveaway. thinking about having a giveaway of a car. We got a warning letter from patron saying, yeah, you know, like, you don't do don't this. do that. that. That what looks like what you're doing is illegal. Right. We're like, okay, fine. But here's the thing. Um, we do want to give a, have a car giveaway completely free. Yeah. You know, we don't want anyone to, but what we'd like to do is at least select from our patrons. Because, yeah. You know, we want, we want to bolster mm. people to support, obviously. What so is it? so we're, we're looking into it. And if you're a patron of worthless whips, uh, you know, sometime down the line, hopefully we'll soon we'll, we'll try. We do have a, a nice car that we want to give away. Right. Love yeah. the twister meme with the truck, by the way. Finally, awesome. someone picked up on yeah. that. Uh, Marijuana Domit. Why is the WHO not crying foul when scientists are naming new COVID strains after locations, African strain, UK strain? If you're ever in DC, I'd love to buy you both. Beer. I talked about this before, but yeah. it's such a double standard because they've got the South African strain, you know, where I'm from. I don't, here's the thing. I don't feel uh, offended by that. You're if a it's virus. A, if it's a strain that comes from a country that I was born in, I don't give a crap. Hashtag Winston's if, a virus. Yeah. If it came from South Africa, then call it the South African strain. If it came from the UK, call it the UK strain it doesn't matter but why is it racist to say that it's the wuhan virus where that's where it comes from right. you know i don't mind if it's the south african strain of the wuhan virus you know yeah it doesn't um matter. it just shows you this massive double standard that you may not you may not it's political yeah it's not racist it's political it's political but you just may not like attach it to china but you can attach it to anywhere else and it's totally fine because the who is controlled by china right we've been this has you been proved over and over yet. again <laughs> You haven't figured that out yeah. yet. Anyway. Uh, in Obliable para okay. Just bought George Orwell 1984. Can't wait to read it and see the parallels. Oh, you'll see many. CCP. You'll see many. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, Seth N., you haven't interviewed Shadman Moment Wait. Uh, you can find his contact information. Okay. I will right. put him in our notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let me paste that there. All right. Satchmo Dog. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chippy Curry Kikuki. 0083 again mm -hmm. 
It's so disappointing that I'll never visit China on principle. Well, hopefully things can change. Yeah, I mean, hopefully things can change. Nothing against China as a country. The, no. Just the leadership is terrible. And he followed up with such an incredible country full of beautiful history and tradition resting under the thumb of a corrupt and subhuman values of the CCP. I pray for those 1.4 billion people, mm. as, as do we. Jonathan Case, interesting fact. Before writing 1984, later in life, George Orwell worked as a colonial police officer in Myanmar. Oh, interesting. That is very interesting. Some of the experiences influenced 1984. That's cool. Mm. Linda Hunter, you, you fellows need a moderator. Banhammer, Chinese Olympics. We actually have one. Yeah. Um, Sept. Saptarshi Sengupta. Thanks. I watched your video. Chinese education does sound similar to India. Our entrance exams are also infamous for rooting childhood. Yeah. yeah. In Japan as well, right? It, there's some yeah. horrendous stories that come out about the Gaokao because the Gaokao is serious stuff. Okay. Um, these poor kids, their whole life rests on the Gaokao. And it's, it's kind of interesting. On the day of the Gaokao, cops will, for free, on motorcycles, pick up children that are stuck in yep. cars and taxis and stuff to get them to the Gaokao on time. But there have been massive cheating scandals. And even worse, you've got situations in the rural areas where a student will pass the Gaokao, but the examiner will take money from a rich parent. Oh, yeah. And I, had to t I used to have to teach some, yeah. some of these rich students. Yeah. One kid who's 18, he had a Ferrari. He's 18 years old. He had yeah. a Ferrari. 18. Just yeah. get that through your head yeah. in China. And uh, he... Ended up passing. This wasn't the Gaokao, but I. The reason yeah. I'm making a parallel is I'm pretty sure this happened with the Gaokao too. He was dumber than a bag of rocks. This sure, kid. sure. And not only did he did get a good entrance exam score on his Gaokao, but he also um, was taking the TOEFL exam mm. for English, English or whatever. And that's that's supposed to be like an international board yeah, or whatever. Yeah. He didn't speak a freaking lick of English, and he passed with flying colors. Sure. Of course they do. But shows you. there was a recent case where a teacher. Um, you know, came out and, and actually tried to apologize because what had happened was there was a, a kind of a girl from a lower lower class family, did incredibly well in the Gaokao, and then you had the rich kid who's lazy and didn't do anything. The rich parents paid the teacher to swap basically the scores around. So, right. you know, uh, write the, you that's know, just change the names on the, on that's the things. That's so really. And so the, the poor girl failed to get into university and kind of had to go down this shitty life without getting a proper education. And the rich person just went to go and squander and do what they want. Sure. You know? And uh, she came out and went to go and apologize to the girl. But this is too late, you know, years yeah. later. But that's the kind of thing that happens around the Gaokao. And it's awful. Right. Anyway, Gaokao, um, for everyone who wants to know what a bloody Gaokao is, by the way, it's is an entrance it's, exam. it's the entrance exam into university in China. And it's the most important thing in a kid's life. And everything up until that point a child's life is stressful as hell once they get into university though they chill out and everything's cool yeah you can basically just coast. university you can't fail university yeah you just China. coast i find but, that i've explained this and people don't understand you literally can't fail university it's the other way around and that's why yeah. when you get chinese um students that go, go to study abroad um they they think they're just going to go and coast along they don't realize that university is actually the serious thing in the states high school and stuff or in australia or whatever is not as important sure. as university so they kind of go into the situation thinking now i can just coast and then they find out oh shit i actually have to work right yeah i wanted to point out that many 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 people in the comments are keep saying that your outfit looks great oh thank you just wanted you to know that i'm i'm wearing what i call the loveless professor outfit that's what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pland says, yeah. or Pyland says, mm -hmm. "Oh Reddit, you can't make you can make fun of taters and you can make fun of dicks, but you can't make fun <laughs> of dictators." That's not right. Uh, I agree. Okay. Septushi Singupta also says, "Can't wait for you guys to come over though. Don't worry, sea milk, your stomach can handle. I'm sure, and I'm sure it will be. I've been all over the entire world. We'll see. You're gonna get him some kori right. roti and." Uh... You realize I've been to Burma, right? Yeah, I know. And yeah. I also got massively, he massively sick, sick and, and went to the hospital. <laughs> so in Laos as well. I just remember I got in, in, in China, you'd always be on the toilet half the time. Yeah. So. I mean, but I do it. I do it and I stick through it. I did have to get medical evacuation from Laos, though. Yeah. But that was typhoid. Who's going to fight off typhoid? You got typhoid when you were yeah. a kid, right? Yeah. And you almost died. I did. You know how it is. I, was, I, my, I got down to five beats per minute. Nice. So beat that. What, is that like a challenge? Yeah. Let's <laughs> see how low we Slow get our my heart, breathing now. heart rate. Yeah. <laughs> Just freeze ourselves. Yep. Uh, Jordan T. Russo, did you learn about the Boer Wars in South Africa? Of yeah, of course. Of course you did. Why yeah. did you not learn about that? Everybody learns about the Boer Wars. It doesn't matter if you're in uh, the UK or where, wherever. 
Sure. Everyone knows about that. Mm. Questioning China says, Terracotta army is fake. <laughs> There's no evidence that it's older than 70s cultural revolution. That's I mean, a good joke, though, because yeah. that's the same logic being applied. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. Well, I mean, there are lots of people that, that, that theorize that a lot of it is fake. Yeah, but whatever. But yeah. I mean, it exists. You, you know what is fake? Is when you go to the terracotta warriors. That's fake. No, I mean, the, the fakest the thing is like, itself. you will meet about 20 old men who yeah. hang around the entrance saying that they're the guy they're the who, discovered, they're the it. Guy who discovered yeah. it and, you know, pay him some money and he'll give you a tour. With souvenirs as well. Yeah. And like a piece of the terracotta warriors. Yeah, it's like, warriors. this is a piece of the terracotta yeah. warriors. That's all fake for sure. That's fake. Yeah. Santi, have you guys said minus nine, uh, 196 strong zero before? Um, I no. think. What is that? I mean, is that like. It's a strong zero. Oh, okay. Of course we've had strong zero. Yeah, but it's I don't know what this minus ever. 196 C. I think this is what it's called. Okay. Strong yeah. zero is our favorite drink in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Just because it's. I don't know, actually know why. It's not actually that good. I don't know how to explain. It's just so satisfying. Well, it's, it's very like, strong. Yeah. Zero. It's, Yes, yeah, a strong zero. Yes, we've cool. had it. And they do they sell it in SoCal? No. No, we've looked everywhere. We, yeah, we do, we we still drink on occasion, but every time we tried to go drink, we would go look for it, and then we couldn't find it. But sure. we did one time. We imported a case, of we, it, and we, it was like two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars for like six cans or something. We're like, what are we doing? Why, why, and I don't know why we did that. We and don't spend money on that kind of stuff. The weird thing is, is like some just eBay seller on in Japan. Yeah, and he just packaged it and sent it over. I'm pretty sure it's not legal to import no. alcohol yeah there's no id check he just like this random bag of mixed stuff that he went to the convenience beer. store and yeah, just put it in it and just shipped it over anyway yeah <laughs> there's a reason it's not here it's obviously not import legal yeah well, uh, we anyway. did those were tall boys by the way yeah. so but still uh, outrageous if i can see it thank you black mm -hmm. halo six hell yeah strong zero mm -hmm. got some strong zero love yeah it's awesome drew g anyone else getting a ton of facebook requests all the from china all of a sudden i actually got those all the time mm. um it, accounts look like legit people yes that actually i've seen that i've seen that quite a bit obviously i get tons anyway but yeah. there are people i don't know now i've stopped i mean i stopped adding friends yeah, on I, Facebook don't, I don't add them years ago uh dan ference our man our man dan says what's the status on timmy boy this week well uh, dan if you had missed previously someone said that lydia his uh, talent manager had reached out to us on december 10th so we're gonna go look for that after the show we will we promise you will uh, you'll have an update by next week for sure bob k says ons will in video hey or swede africa one year yeah ons <laughs> will a video hey or swede africa one year what does that mean yeah we want a video about south, south africa, africa when okay when I guess you're. one year is when one year one year not okay. one year one year it looks like one year <laughs> i know it does but it's not L, but you know L. okay let me you know in in afrikaans uh subject is v-a-k okay v-a-k vac no, fuck. But, but it's pronounced fuck. Fuck. <laughs> okay. And nice. choose is uh, kiss. Okay. And fuck kiss. Choose your subject. Well, no. The kiss other, fuck. Yeah. The, the, the other thing is side, okay, is K-A-N-T, cunt. So we, we, us English boys, used to make these stupid jokes in, in uh, you know, in school. And we go up and say to, like, uh, another guy or whatever we'll say, or a girl or something will say, say in Afrikaans, choose my side and subject. So it's like, kiss me cunt and fuck. <laughs> that's, that's language. I'm not swearing here, by the no, way. No, that's, that's, but, you know, it's yeah. stupid little things like that. Just, that's, just I like, put, no, I like put that. it out there. That's good. That's some good stuff. I like, I like that school, school. That's schoolboy humor. Schoolboy humor. Stupid, like high school level schoolboy humor. Yeah. yeah, we have things like that, except not in Afrikaans, obviously. Yeah. Alba Alpha 84. I think China took advantage of the Asian crash in 97 when Southeast Asian countries collapsed on weekend and allowed China to assert more power over the region. Yeah, mm. probably true. Fireheart, do you think the Three Gorges Dam is at risk of collapse? Potentially. We'll see if it can survive another rainy season. Yeah, it's, it's definitely it's always up in, the, it's up in the air. And now yeah. they're going to build the, the next largest dam in they the world. They love dams. Gosh, gosh damn it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Turin Turambar. Is there any reasonable faction in the CCP? A reasonable faction? Not really. I mean, the Jiang faction is corrupt, but it was also much more free in terms of like what she's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I should say the other factions are more free than Xi Jinping's faction, who they thought was going to be the liberal one, which is funny. Yeah. yeah. He turned out to be the worst. Uh, Jay Leo, face is big in China. Does face also matter in West? Uh, 
Kind of, but not to even remotely no, the same No, it's extent. not the same. It's much more about individualism. It's less, yeah. if you do something embarrassing, it's not the end of the world. Sure. Right? Yeah, sure. And face is like, you have to give face in China. Mm. Like, so your superior is very superior. That's right. right. Uh, here it's more about equality. Mm -hmm. Seth N., uh, you can find Shad Man Investigation. Thank you. Free Nation Radio. Do you expect more gaffes from Biden like what he said at Town Hall? It's so frustrating trying to break through to people about him in China. Uh, probably. Daniela Mia. Thank you for your great content and covering these important issues. Thank you, Daniela. Appreciate Danielle. it. Yeah. Dustin Pearson, our man. Is it, if everything is China and China says old relic culture is faked by U.S., then they aren't calling their own aren't they calling their own culture fake? Glad you guys are doing well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in a in a way. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Ah, sorry. Uh, DTQC in Quebec City, Quebec, Canada. Mm -hmm. There is a massive shipping port project, and the Chinese ambassador wrote an opinion piece in one of our journals. You guys are awesome, and should look it up. Yeah. That okay. Thank you. We'll take a look at that for sure. I'll put that in our little notes. Mm -hmm. If you guys ever have suggestions, we always put it in our notes, so they might make the show next time. Yeah. Andy P, could you? Uh, Ever see yourselves returning to China? That's our most common question ever. Yes, absolutely, 100% if there's political change. Yeah, there, the right has, there has to be political change. That's the only way. I'd love to go back to China, but not under the current system. No. You either have to suck up to them or be silent. Right. And uh, in fact, tomorrow um, I, on my channel, on Serpent Today, I interviewed a Ghanaian guy yeah. who yeah. made a Facebook post, and that got him arrested and deported. But like the police stayed with him. And his, it wasn't an anti CCP no, post. No, no. The police stayed with him, his wife, and his three month old baby in his own apartment to make sure he didn't escape for three days. <laughs> that's and then the, uh, it's a long story. It's but a crazy it's story. It's a crazy story. So uh, just tune in. And that kind of proves my point that, you know, anything coming out of China right now on YouTube or Facebook or any social media, it has to please the party. It doesn't necessarily have to be a tool for the party, but it must please the party. Are you, are you plugging my video? Yeah, well, you know. It's literally my video yesterday. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's called uh, <laughs> The Death of Reality in China. It's yeah. about how anything you see coming out of China right now is not real. Yeah, so if you see a YouTuber is posting stuff from China, you realize that they can never be critical no. of China or the Chinese government, I should say. Or, or, or cast, even realistic. Yeah, they can't cast uh, China in a bad light in any way, in shape, any or way. form. Or they will just get deported and shut up like this guy that I interviewed that you'll see tomorrow. Right. Anyway. Uh, Dave says, Winston, have you ever thought about a beard? You would look very cute. You kind of have a beard now. Yeah, this is more of a five o'clock shadow. I don't really know. Uh, it get, it always gets to a point where I, I I just can't handle it anymore. It's too itchy and weird, so I, I shave it. I've never tried to grow a beard. Maybe I'll try someday. Now that we all wear masks, I can get away with it because I can True. look all scruffy, you know? You, you, a person you never want to see with a beard is me. <laughs> uh, yeah. I can do it. It just does not match my face. <laughs> yeah. Black Halo 6, since you swapped the ADV China and ADV podcast schedules, are you guys planning on giving more attention to the ADV podcast patron stuff? We should. Yeah. And we're not neglecting it. It's just that there's not that many people on there, but now that we see people are going on there, we're going to start posting there. Absolutely. So appreciate all the people that went to patreon.com slash ADV podcast. We never put it out there, but no. people are, have been finding it, which is great. That's awesome. We appreciate the support, yeah. uh, but we'll definitely start posting on there for sure. Yeah, we'll make it a weekly thing. We'll put it in our schedule. Yeah. Thank you for the reminder. Thank you. Uh, Kane Ra, uh, Tencent has a lot of shares in Reddit, just saying. Yeah, we, we certainly we know. do. We know. Mm. Uh, Chippe Kariki. O double O eight three again. I'm a Venezuelan immigrant watching the CCP subjugate my people through Maduro. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of influence. It's awful. It's awful. Love your work. Uh, keep it up, y'all. What do you, you think? I mean, I understand how you feel because South Africa is in the same sure. boat. The the ANC is being led around by the nose by the CCP, mm -hmm. and it's affecting people's lives in in my home country as well. Right. And it's just awful to see. And there's nothing. It seems that can be done about this because no. they've got such a stranglehold over the corrupt officials. Sure. Uh, Dylan Faltiask, uh, Faltisco says Asahi is the goat. I love yeah, yeah but that's... only the real kind. <laughs> yeah, not the crap swill we had. Yeah, it's I don't get it. Like Asahi is one of my favorites, but when you buy it in an import store here, it's coming from Vietnam or from Italy or other weird places. You need the Japanese stuff that just yeah. tastes great. And last one, Jordan T Russo says, "When will you guys come to Australia?" whenever we can it's on the list we we'd love to we'd we have to. a lot of i've got some family in australia yeah. we've got a lot of friends we've had enough there. invites from you guys yeah. too and it's, we appreciate it's it. fantastic we can't wait to come and like just ride motorcycles across the whole country really yeah maybe stay out of the outback mostly yeah i don't want to die in the desert or whatever we we drive through that crap here though yeah we do it's really so no we different can <laughs> we can do it we can do anyway it. uh cool oh sorry noah manning huge subscriber and fan to you both 
hope this helps you a bit to continue making the content absolutely the world thank you so thank much you guys guys it's been again a, a fun episode it's been great interacting with all of you i hope you've learned something through this episode and had fun along the way we try not to be too depressing because it is usually depressing things well, we talk about um but yeah it's important thank you for joining us again guys we can't wait to see you next time join me tomorrow for my special interview with the Ghanaian guy i think you'll find it kind of fascinating and it's kind of humorous too in a bad way but it's you'll see um uh, don't forget to check out his video and uh worthless whips again on monday uh, yeah. sorry tuesday what am i saying monday you will get nothing this week because nothing <laughs> you deserve <laughs> nothing <laughs> no adv china is every second week now because we've yeah. made the podcast weekly um, and we we make the episodes of adv china about double the length yeah so we're putting more effort into making yeah. them a little better a um, lot of effort actually yeah worthless whips is going well we've actually got some great news i think we've yeah. got to tell everyone anyone who watches worthless whips that freaking redneck viper that big red truck with a v10 that we bought has been giving me such a headache to get it to pass smog yeah it's it's horrendous okay and uh it's it's a weird system because newer cars these days have got a, a self-test diagnostic that they run you know with the internal computer so right. it's not something that you can just you know oh it passed or not the car has to run this diagnostic in under certain conditions and it's been failing and failing and failing and failing and eventually um you'll see but i, I sat here and i used silicone and made a huge blob of a weird thing finally managed to fix the evap system and today actually we took a risk because we had to go drive on the highway for like half an hour right right and the car is not registered and doesn't have plates and the only way we can register it and, and have plates is if it passes these emission things so we took a risk and we drove and we we're just stressing the whole way but guess what it passed it worked so we're on our way to getting it completely like legitimate right just cool. wanted to tell you guys who are interested anyway sounds good and check out worthless whoops it's our car channel it's our it fun is. little thing on the side um anyway guys <laughs> sounds, sounds like we're having an affair yeah well you know kind of with our youtube um and i'll look into the tim pool stuff <laughs> yeah we'll look into that we promise anyway guys thank you for joining us stay awesome have an incredible 